We rejoin our friends the Horde, Amari Scarf and Sphere, as they stare in horror at the creature known as Linda Miller. They have been following Linda Miller through the darkness for days after escaping the Temple of Ambrazul and the uh, pursuing insect horde. They've uh, figured out uh, a little bit about the uh, the Temple of Ambrazul and the cultists who resided there. They've learned about some of their toys and uh, and they have leveled up recently, which is great. Everyone's excited about that. They continue to follow Linda Miller until they come around the corner and find her uh, shaking a short, thick body in her mouth. She's she's shaking back and forth. And as uh, Sphere approaches, he sees that this is a bullywug. And Linda Miller begins to back away from Sphere, shaking uh, vigorously. Uh, this clearly lifeless bullywug. <sighs> Linda, Linda, you made a trade with Amari. That's my bullywug. Linda. <sighs> <laughs> Sphere's going to jump forward and try to grab the bullywug from Linda. Ro- roll me a dexterity check to see if you can grab it. Never trust a man who can dance. 21. <laughs> 20, you, you grab the bullywug and yank it out of her hand, and her eyes get big, and she sprints into the darkness <gasps> Wait, down Linda, the passageway. I, Linda? Linda Miller. Oh, great job. I great just, job. I, we made a de- this was mine. We made a it's deal for it. I guess this is a lesson to never make deals with feral children or whatever she is. You hear a uh, down the passageway. You hear a <laughs> like that. It's, 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 it's a kind of sounds like another. Uh, it's like a, a guttural sort of scream and then sudden silence. Oh, I think she's fine. Okay. Throw the bullywug over my shoulder and like firemen carry him and start walking towards where I heard the other bullywug oh, noise. All right, cool. So, you, you guys head down the passageway, and it is getting, uh, it is it is descending, it is going down, and it is getting warmer and steamier, and there's beads of moisture that cling to your face and roll down your neck, and there's a stench of decaying vegetation that's like, um... It's like grass clippings and, and sewage mixed together. It's this unpleasant, just organic odor. And the humidity is just balmy as you head down this passageway. The, uh, the floor is also turning from stone into mud. So you're coming out of a, of a clearly very rocky cavernous area into a much, again, it's just the wetness in the air is obviously congealing on the walls and you see just water running down the sides of this passageway. Until before long, you are uh, you're wading through muck that's probably six to eight inches deep. You're leaving clear footprints behind you um, and as you step into the mud and you pull your foot up, the footprints fills with water. As you've been moving down, there are little passageways that come into and run out of the passageway that you're on. Uh, you've got a pretty good idea. You can kind of see some footprints from where Linda Miller uh, headed this way. Uh, it's been a while since you've seen any of her footprints, maybe because she's up on a wall or she's climbing on the ceiling or because she slipped down another passageway that you missed. You're, you're not sure of that, but this was the general direction. There, um, there have been bullywug voices da- echoing down corridors. It's hard to tell where they came from. As you continue onward, at one point you hear a number of bullywug shouts behind you, back in the direction of where you originally uh, encountered the bullywug with Linda Miller. And then, uh, to your displeasure, there is a sound of a horn through the hallways. Horn! 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 Three times like that. Linda Miller. Oh no. Uh, Scarf draws his sword. Yeah, I'm gonna ditch the the bullywug body <laughs> I've been carrying. Just like toss it down <laughs> in the mud. You, do, you don't want to. You don't want to run into people <laughs> carrying a dead bullywug on your back. I don't think it's the best look. <laughs> I just do like one of those Ace Ventura. Just. Uh, 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 uh. 
Uh, hey guys, you guys, we all heard that, right? Everybody heard that. That was pretty clear. Again, hard to pinpoint direction because of the echo and the passageways coming in and out, but it was pretty darn audible. These passageways, they're all littered with, with bullywaths. I've been, I've been hearing them. They're in here somewhere. We can stand out here and fight, or we can take a risk down one of these passages. Yeah, well, you know... The thing that I really want to know is where Linda Miller went because she was the one that was going to get us out of here. And um, if we lose her, then we're, you know, kind of stuck down here. So yeah. that sort of um, doesn't seem ideal. If we find Linda Miller, but the Bullywogs, we have to fight the Bullywogs if the Bullywogs attack. But Linda Miller attacked the Bullywogs. Should we go down the passage or should we go to the Bullywogs where... Linda Miller. Linda Miller. Mm. Sphere, you, you do see something that looks irregular in the hallway up ahead. It's at the edge of your uh, dark vision. Hey, Amari. Mm. Um, have my back. Okay. I'm going to start. Okay. I'll start creeping towards okay, it. Okay, so you're creeping through the muck in this underground passageway that's about 10 feet tall and 10 feet wide. It, the passageway, at first it looks like it just dead ends, but it, it doesn't, it turns. And as you start uh, to come around the corner, you you see what, what, what the abnormality was. And it's a wooden sign against the side of the passageway. And it's, uh, it's a wooden sign and it has this uh, almost childish uh, painting on it in common. And it says, the majestic city of Rumpa, and majestic is wildly misspelled. And underneath it says, all must pay tribute. And next to the sign is a, like a cave drawing, like scribbled on the wall in chalk in equally bad spelling and common. And it is just scrawled with an untrained hand. It says, Beware, and the next word is is a word you don't know. It's T A Y B A L R O K. T A R B A L. T A Y B A L R O K. T Balrock. <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, while Severe is reading that, Tip-off. Scarf just leans in over his shoulder and just goes, "It's a mountain east of the Linfield Gorge." <laughs> <laughs> Scarf, how'd you get so sneaky? Linda Miller. <sighs> Linda Miller. Hey, walk. hey, I have to... Amari. Yeah. Mm. I think we found our way out. I don't think we need Linda no more. I mean, I guess I'm, I kind of miss her and I'm kind of worried about her, but at the same time, we do have a way out, it looks like. Um, are you sure? No. I, I mean, I don't really. We can go see if Linda Miller's back there. Maybe she went back to the camp. Or she's trying to eat some bullywugs. Maybe that's what they're saying beware of. Prominent huh? peak in the area. Scarf. A, a wildfire swept through the area in November 2013. At least 100 firefighters were involved. I think there's some challengers waiting down that hall where that horn came from. I heard they wanted a good fight. I am ready to fight, just like the firefighters involved in the wildfire in 2013. <sighs> Do I ever get to roll to see if I stop babbling? <laughs> Not yet. Okay. <laughs> the a... symbol in the region. Mm. Table Rock is the town of Morgantown. Rock. I suspect that uh, if you spend time away from Linda Miller, you'll uh, you'll probably get some opportunities to stop babbling. Okay. Should we just leave him down here to die? I mean... At this point, what's the difference if we take him along with us? I just told him someone wants to fight him, and he just started talking to himself. What good is he going to do us if he can't be <laughs> Table muscle? Table Rock is east of the Linville Gorge, and I have my sword drawn ready <laughs> for battle. Okay, okay. Uh, that way, and I'm just going to point back towards down the hall. All right, and I'm going to charge down the hall. Like, back the way that you came? Isn't that where the horn came from? Or we we just don't know? You don't know where the horn came from. I uh. mean, uh, yeah, yeah, because of the echoes and the passageways and things like that. All right, well, then, uh, in that case, I'm going to go, Hey, Scoff, Table Rock. Table Rock. I'm going to point at the sign. He's still in the And I'm going to point in the, in, the, in the direction going forward. As you come farther around the corner, the bend in this passageway, there's a wooden structure up ahead that you see at the edge of Amari's light. Or uh, you, you actually, sorry, Amari doesn't have a light. There is a wooden structure that you see up ahead in the darkness. 
and uh, it's a as you approach it's it's a rickety wooden wall with an iron reinforced door in it that fills the cavern passage so imagine like a like a a tube that you've been walking through and then a, a, almost like a circular wooden wall wedged into this tube sealing it like the top of a barrel seals the the cylinder of the barrel and in the middle of this rickety wooden wall is an iron door um and uh there's a, a um there's a, a sort of a semi squared uh barred window that's next to the door. So you've got this iron door and then you've got this square window next to it that's clearly off kilter. This is very, very poor craftsmanship. There's not not actually anything square about this uh, about this window or this door, which is clearly off kilter. And underneath the iron uh, bars, there is painted again in scrawling common, it says pay tribute. The wall looks like a fortification that was built by children to defend a clubhouse. Like that, that's, that's the general impression that you get. Like it looks like scrap lumber and slightly bent nails and, and like a really impressive door like that, 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 that kid somehow found. There's a moss that climbs the wet wooden walls from the muck, and the wood itself is like mildewing and molding and rotten at the bottom where it's been submerged down into the mud. And it looks like if you gave a pretty good kick, you could just break off the bottom of this wall, you know, and climb under it if you wanted to. The door is actually hanging open, and, uh, and there is a rusty spear that's leaning up against the cave wall in on this side of uh, of the of the wooden uh, fortification. Hmm. Well, uh, shall we go forward to find Linda Miller? Oh, I'm sorry, I don't recognize when you talk normal. Um, <laughs> sure, I guess so. Yeah. Should we should we leave her a note? D- do you have anything to leave a note with? Yeah, I mean, we got all these oh, books. the spear! We could get the spear and maybe, like, scratch off some little letters in the moss. Works for me. Okay, I'll do it then. Yeah, it's probably a good idea. So Mari's gonna go and grab the spear and she's gonna kind of walk over to the moss on the wall and she'll look back and be like, what, what should I put? Uh, Linda Tell Miller. Her. That's a good start. Linda. How do you spell Miller? Probably just like it sounds, right? Right. right, right. Tell her I'm sorry. Uh, Scarf's an idiot. Yes. Sphere is sorry. Sphere is sorry. Uh, we will honor our deal. You know, can't have bad business. The bug man is coming. The deal. bug man is coming. While, while this is going on, Scarf, it's been a while since Linda Miller took off and you haven't heard the voice in your head for a while, so go ahead and make me a wisdom saving throw okay. and uh, and let's see if your head is clearing or not. Okay, I got a 16 plus, I think a plus two. Oh no, it's plus zero, I'm sorry, so it is 16. Okay, that's fine. 16 is fine. Not having that voice continuously chanting in your head has allowed you to sort of clear your thoughts and you don't feel compelled to babble the the phrases that you've heard again and again and again anymore. Thank God. <laughs> My head has cleared. I am no longer under the spell. Uh, some peace and quiet. Well, you're still under a spell. I just want to point that out. You do realize you're still old. I'm starting to think age looks good on me. Well, I thought you didn't like wrinkles. On others, no. But uh, <laughs> as Scarf, I look. I make wrinkles look pretty pretty glorious. Oh, they look like wrinkles they're like a scar with my battle with age (laughs) yeah well you're definitely losing buddy (laughs) and you smell like cabbage oh yeah it's uh actually hold oh i think that might be all of us actually (laughs) that bullywog did not do me any uh any favors my nose has picked up quite a bit of pungent smells all right we got the note to linda cool i'm just gonna go up to the wall and just Mm -hmm. try to I, I'm I'm gonna punch it. You, you well, the door it? is hanging. The door is open. Um, oh, okay, yeah. Okay. You're welcome to punch the wall if you want. The door is open. All right. Well, I mean, okay, I'm gonna Kyle. commit to the bit now. Just, I'm just gonna. 
Okay, roll me a uh, roll me a strength check uh, or athletics check with your uh, with your punch, and let's see what happens. All right, just gonna commit to the bit here. Uh, All right, yeah, sure, why not? It's a five plus uh, strength two. Oh uh, no, zero. Uh, five. So it's a five. You um you punch, and unfortunately for you, it's like you hit a stud, like one of the few supports that actually is holding this thing up. You punch right on top of, and absolutely nothing happens. All right, step back, guys. Step back, guys. I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna clear this out. Uh, oh. <laughs> I like the way you think. <laughs> exactly. It. It's like uh, it, it's like in Taekwondo class when you when the guy fails to break uh, the balsa wood. Like that's that's what happened with you. It's just it was you were just you were like a centimeter farther away from the wall than you thought. So you just touch it. Fear not, my minion. I will show you how it's done. And I pat Severe on the head, and then I want to also punch. That's demeaning. <laughs> Okay, then you roll me uh, an uh, roll me an athletics check, and at the same time, let's check in with Amari to see how uh, how she feels about what's going on. So she finishes off the note with "Get us out, X O X O X O, Amari." <laughs> And we're just in the and background. Then, <laughs> you two, next to the open door, you two are punching the wooden wall. I, I rolled a 14 and I have plus five to athletics. Oh, you you punch and your fist goes straight through this rotten wood. Again, remember the humidity is like 85%. Don't think of dry wood. Right. Think of wet wood. And it just... it. It, there's a, a damp crack as your fist goes through this wall to the other side. I just loosened it for you. Why 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 are you doing all this? Wasn't the door ajar? What what door? The door in the wall and the thing. What oh yeah, the iron scarf. door, it was slightly ajar. Scarf, what are you doing? There's a door right here. I was just showing the wall my strength. <laughs> this this guy, he's such a uh, he's such a such an idiot. Uh, yes, it's forever inscribed on this wall until Moss grows over it again. Uh, well, hopefully she finds us, you know, don't want to do bad business. We said we'd I hope her. she knows how to read. Yeah, she, she said she had like a name tag and stuff. I would assume so. Well, okay. Your handwriting is quite good. Thank you. I went to school for a very long time to learn how to... You know, and I get wrapped on the knuckles if my penmanship wasn't good. So, thank you. I would get wrapped on the knuckles if I didn't bring enough fish home. Luxury. <laughs> no one ever loved me and wrapped me on the knuckles for nothing. I had to hit myself. All right, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> as you as you step through the wooden door, there's not much on the other side. This is really is just a fortification. There is a stool uh, for someone obviously to sit on and look out through the iron bars and collect tolls. It is flipped over um, and uh, there are footprints all over the muck on that side. There's clearly been a lot of sort of foot traffic right around this, uh, this wall in this area. And uh, but no one is here right now. As soon as you step through the door, the volume of the world seems to increase. There is a loud frog chorus. Like imagine uh, being in the forest and the loudest frog chorus you've ever heard. I don't know if you've ever been in a swamp or uh, near a stream or a pond at night. And it's uh, a variety of different frogs you hear. You're hearing the boop, boop, and then you're also hearing the kick, 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 kick. And, and um, it's all coming. Uh, you, you uh, it's hard again, hard to pinpoint just because of the caverns. But you're fairly certain this is um, this is coming from the uh, from the east. <clears throat> Do any of the foot? Like the footsteps in the um, area look like Linda Miller's weird feet. I uh, roll me a perception check or an investigation check. Let's see what you see. Uh, because she had very weird feet. She did have a weird sort of insectoid feet that touched the ground in multiple yes. odd places. Distinctly different from 
frog like feet. Uh, 14. Okay, yeah. Um, you are suspicious of what you see in the muck. There are some. Uh, there are some places that look like it, it, either either something linear like a like a stool leg or uh, I don't know uh, some sort of a stick or something was pressed down into the mud or it was maybe Linda Miller's foot and the water has kind of filled in so you know what I mean like don't think of like beautiful pristine footsteps the the, the muck is too wet and too deep for that and but there are some general shapes where you go mm, that's definitely not a frog foot. It could be something else. I think she's been through here, guys. Yeah. I have a hunch. Yeah. Hey, Sphere's going to peel his eyes. He's going to look around because you said... That there sounds was like painful. A- yeah. <laughs> yeah. Please, stop that, Sphere. <laughs> you think Linda came through here? Yes, I'm pretty sure. I mean, you remember how weird her feet looked and a lot of these... What remains of these tracks look like her weird feet to me, so... Well, I say, uh, that's better lead than anything else we got. We want to try to take this bad boy east where we're hearing all this sound. Uh, I suppose that's the only option we have, really. Uh, uh, Scarf, do you have some sort of, like, mental connection with Miss Miller because of your crazies? I will try and reach out. Can you, like, send a telepathic message to her or something? Uh, Scarf is going to close his eyes, sit down, like, kind of, uh, crisscross applesauce, and put his hands on both his knees, and he's gonna focus really hard and see if he can make a mental connection to Linda Miller. (laughs) Um, okay, um, do you have any sort of a spell or anything that might... (laughs) <laughs> nothing, nothing that would make this possible. Uh, I have Compel Duel and Heroism. I thought it was going to be like, I do not. <laughs> no, the, that's, I'm going to take that as a hard no. Um, <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, am I going to do, am I going to do, this? Roll, uh, roll an Arcana check <laughs> and you have to get a natural 20 <laughs> to feel anything. But you are going to search your mind to see if you can grab onto this psychic thread. <laughs> uh, that is a fourteen. No, yeah, you, you got nothing. I was, gonna, you know, I was like, you know, narratively, I could, like, uh, you know, <laughs> let's take a shot at it. No. If the dice willed it to happen. Oh yeah, totally. If if you would, if I had said natural twenty and then you got a natural twenty, the connection between Scarf and Linda Miller would be a thing. Oh, of course. <laughs> All right. I cannot seem to reach her at the moment. <laughs> Maybe we can try again later. That sounds good. Yeah. Also, you've got mud all over your butt. You probably should have sat on the stool. It's nothing new. Oh, okay. The uh, the passageway continues on past this fortification. Shall we? We shall. Yes. Do we want to move stealthily or do we want light so we can see stuff? Uh, well... I will leave that up to you. Any challenges that come at us, I will cut down. Uh, okay. Can we all see in the dark? Uh, like, fairly okay? I can. I don't think uh, Swamp Ass over here can. Swamp Ass, can you see in the dark? <laughs> I'm, I'm an animal person. Of course I can. Okay. Let's move in the dark. Okay. Let's go. All right. You guys move in the dark, and... You have about 200 yards of winding, of winding hallway passageway before you come to an intersection. There are a couple of different passageways that come together. There's also a signpost stuck right in the middle of this uh, intersection. And the wood is broken off of the signpost and is laying at the bottom. And Scarf, you do hear some and you are pretty sure that there are voices approaching from one of the other passageways towards this intersection. Uh, I'll do the hold up my hand to stop them. Amari's going to run right into him because she doesn't know what that means. Like, what? You could have at least... Spear just... runs into Amari because he wouldn't, couldn't see Scarf in front of Amari. That <laughs> 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 one fuck. <laughs> And without any hushed tones, just say, there are people approaching. 
<laughs> yeah, you hear it. And then silence. <laughs> they are aware of our presence. <laughs> Yeah, I wonder why. <laughs> Jesus Christ. There is silence uh, around the intersection, and nothing seems to be happening. It's quiet. Too quiet. Amari is going to cast light on her shield at this point. Uh, the passageway lights up. Yeah, and, and you can see uh, the intersection more clearly. You can see the wood on the ground, uh, and it's sort of these cross pieces that are stuck together, and there's that same uh, scrawl, black paint common written on the um, on the arrows that are pointing in different directions. And so you see that, and then there is uh, silence. Fellow travelers, there is no need to hide. We are aware of your presence. You may come out and speak with us. I don't think they're travelers. I think this is their home. So, oh, well, then never mind. I wouldn't mind being a guest in your home. With, uh, with that, you actually see two eyes that appear peeking into your hallway. And there is a bullywug face that is looking around the corner. And in broken common, it says, Table Rock is a, a mountain range east of the Linville Gorge. <gasps> and, and his face disappears back behind the, um, it disappears back behind the rock uh, that he was peeking out of. Um, like, yeah, you saw his bullywog eyes get large and then he disappeared. All right. I got to I read all the fireball chapters. I think I need to go back and read all the how to make friends chapters. <laughs> can I do well, an insight? I think I'll s- go ahead. I was going to say if I can do an insight check to see if he was if that was a look of fear or a look of excitement. Oh, yeah. Roll me an insight check. Cool. So uh, what was that insight? Oh, cool. Plus zero. Uh, I got a four. Uh, yeah, you, you, you can't read a bullywog at all. I would, um, I would assume that maybe it wasn't positive because at the beginning of this tunnel, it said, beware table rock. So maybe he did not want to hear that bec- because Linda Miller eats them. Oh. And, um, <clears throat> So Oops. he thinks probably we are Associates. her friends or something. I mean, to be Associates. fair, we are her friends, right? Wait. Ew, no. Oh, I, that's it. Yeah, who needs, who needs friends? <laughs> Not Sphere. Uh, do we want to follow? Do we want to follow where we um, saw him? Let's just wait here and see. So you guys, are you going to wait him out? Okay. I, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sphere will definitely take the dodge action at this point. <laughs> I'll have my hand on the hilt of my okay. sword. Um, so there's there's silence, and you guys wait for uh, about five minutes, and the uh, but the light is still on, you know, and you hear after about five minutes, then you hear some squishing in the muck, and uh, it almost feels like footsteps moving away down one of the tunnels. It appears that we have scared them off. Yeah. All right, which way should we go? Shall I go first in case of ambush? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Most definitely. Scarf will walk out to check the sign. There's, um, you still hear the frog chorus off to the east, and there is the sign, assuming the sign is laying down the way that, in a way that's oriented to what is actually going on, there's a really long wooden arrow that points to the east towards the sound of the sign, and on it written in common is great, great, wonderful hall, and every word is misspelled, and it points off to the east. To the northeast, Uh, The arrow points and it says Majestic City, wildly misspelled and misspelled differently 
then Majestic City was uh, spelled misspelled uh, at the at the wall, and then Stunning Forest points to the south, and in a different it's a different piece of wood that looks much newer, and the ink is different. It's a it's a red ink as opposed to the black that's used on the other pieces of wood. It says sexy treasure reward and it points to a passageway to the west i would really like to see this sexy treasure reward room. i mean yeah it's like basically calling for us right i agree yes i've i've always been down for a sexy treasure reward so i mean definitely not a trap right is the treasure sexy or the treasure reward sexy ah, there's only one way to find out you step to the to the passageway that's indicated as sexy treasure reward and the passageway is it, it, it's about 10 feet in diameter as you start and it quickly narrows down to about uh, five feet in diameter and it's about 10 feet tall so it's um it's like a it's like a, a column right so five feet wide and 10 feet tall is 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 kind of how it comes together so it just gets narrow you'd be going one at a time and it um the muck angles upward and you see an, it's an uphill slope uh, in the muck uh, heading off to um, to the west. Scarf, <laughs> you go first. I will go first. Excellent. Thank you. Right. <laughs> so Scarf's going first. Are, uh, are, you, are you guys letting him go by himself or are you going with him? Oh, no, he's... No, we're watching. Yeah, we're watching from <laughs> afar safely. Okay, so Scarf, you... Uh, you walk about uh, 20 feet or so uh, as the muck um, starts to slope upward. Can I just touch things with my sword as I'm walking forward just to see if there's like traps? Like you're touching like the walls and yeah. stuff? Yeah. Just like poking stuff, like random stuff. Like I'm, there's no method to it. Just yeah, roll me, uh, just roll me. Um, okay, so roll me a, an investigation check with disadvantage. Just. Uh, not, I'm not checking anything, but I just want to kind of get an idea of, like, your random poking method. I rolled a 17 both times. Oh, okay, great. Okay, cool. Wow. Okay, sweet. So you're very effective poking mechanism. You start heading up on this gradual slope about 20 feet, and it's in the muck. And um, as you walk up, you do notice that the muck that you're in, it, it um, you start to feel the stone back underneath your feet again. At the same time, the uh, the walls are are more wet than they have been, and there's just this sheet of moss, like dark green moss, on the walls. And then it hooks a hard left at 90 degrees, and you go about five feet, and then it hooks a hard right. And just before you make the right, your sword tings on something metallic mm. in the wall on the left and as you look you do see um it's they're spikes but they're uh made of wood and uh, largely made of wood there there are a couple of little metal spikes sort of mixed in there but the metal spikes are just really rusted and seem quite dull and the wooden spikes are completely rotted through and look pretty ineffective uh can i kind of take my sword and just do like a a quick chop down and see if I can cut the wood through the spikes. Yeah, yeah, sure. Go ahead and roll me, um, just roll me, uh, roll me, uh, roll me an attack, I guess. Just, yeah, roll me, uh, an attack roll, just like you're hitting it with your sword. I got a 23. Oh, yeah, you totally just, just easily hack all the, um, all, all the spikes off of the wall and nothing. Yeah, and, and at this point, it's, it's largely a flat, a flat wall and, uh, yeah, it, it, that was pretty easy. You, you just kind of, you, you took it apart pretty, pretty quickly. Yeah. All right, so the passageway leads off to the right, um, and the incline increases significantly. It is safe up to this point. Would you like to come up here, and I will continue forward? Because I'm, like, around a bend now, right, from them? Yep, you're around a bend now. Sounds good to me. I guess we can go up and join him sort of where he is and then have him continue on. Yeah, yeah, we'll climb up there. And once they get there, I'll kind of start to make my way forward again. All right. So you start making your way forward. Uh, what's the walking order? Uh, who's who's in front of who? Coming um, coming up there. I know Scarf is at, in front. At the rear. Okay, and you through. can be at the front. Okay. Right. Sphere. So Sphere, I'm assuming you're kind of standing at the bottom of the slope that um, that 
scarf is climbing right now where the spikes used to be. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, right. yeah, we're both just so, chilling at that little platform, I guess. All right, cool. So, uh, Scarf, you start to head up this passageway heading up uh, up the slope, and uh, you see up ahead, the uh, there's another sort of one of those platforms, and then the uh, passageway makes a turn again off to the left. And so you're coming up to a place where it turns left, and as you get to about 10 feet in front of that passageway, the floor becomes the slickest type of mud that you have ever stepped on. So you immediately step on it. It's almost like some sort of polished stone with moss and uh, and mud on top of it. Just, uh, just slick as ice. And I need you to roll me a, a dexterity save <laughs> to see if you go down on the muck. That's an uh, eight. You go straight to the floor and shoot down the slope, the steep incline that you had just uh, <laughs> made your way up. <laughs> gaining oh speed and mud as you go. Uh, you're hurtling towards the wall where the spikes were. Sphere, I need you to make a dexterity saving throw uh, to see if you can get out of the way as Scarf <laughs> hurtles for Here you I come. inside a mud ball. Oh yeah, 25. Oh yeah, you dive out of the way as Scarf slams into the wall at the bottom of the slope. Uh, Scarf, I need you to roll me 3d6 uh, bludgeoning. Uh, no, actually, you, you remove the spikes. So 2d6 uh, bludgeoning damage. We're we'll soften it up since there's nothing spiky down there. Uh, I got five damage. All right, so you take five damage as you slam uh, mud spattering everywhere, soaking a sphere who's undamaged but covered in liquid sludge. Great. Careful. Yeah. It seems we'll have to work for this reward. I do not feel sexy. <laughs> I do. I'm just like stand. I'm guessing I'm just like standing there covered in mud, just like, just like the car, like on the street corner when the car yeah. like dips into the puddle. <laughs> exactly. Are you charging the hill, Amari? Yes. I'm going to do it. Just going to try. All right, perfect. So, uh, so you get to head up. The exact same experience. It's a steep. It's a steep slope. Uh, you get about thirty uh, feet up, and you can see right where the ground sort of shifted in its consistency that sent scarf heading down. And because you uh, have seen this happen before, I'm going to give you advantage on your dexterity save to see if you can uh, if you can maneuver past the slippery spot to the top of the um, to the top of the hill. I got a total nineteen. Okay, cool. So you uh, you are able to um, you are able with your elvish uh, dexterity and uh, and lightness and quickness uh, able to sort of wedge yourself and move along through the mud and the muck without slipping and sliding down. You go the last ten feet and uh, the floor levels out and there is a sharp left turn at ninety degrees, just like there was before. And you're looking at about you just uh, just four to five feet uh, passageway, five feet wide, and it opens out into uh, into a larger room, and that's that's pretty much what you can see. I don't understand what was so hard about that. It was quite easy, actually. Oh, is it? All right. Well, I'm gonna come up then and check this out. I will catch you if you fall, and I'm gonna stand at the bottom, like you know, like a a catcher's, <laughs> like, a like a yeah. <laughs> A baseball catcher position. Yeah. Sphere is gonna walk up the hill. <laughs> this is this is this is gonna this is not gonna go well. All right. Uh, so Amari is standing at the top of the hill, and uh, Sphere is just going to walk after her. Oh yeah, correct? yeah. Scarf Scarf isn't smart enough to keep all the treasure for himself. He would definitely announce it if he saw it. Amari is sneaky. And she will steal everything before gotcha. I even get a chance to see it. So we can't leave her alone with sexy treasure. <laughs> okay, so, so, so that sounds fair. good. That is a fair assessment. All right, uh, so you you climb the slippery slippery slope, 
and um, I'm going up on all fours. All right, you go. So you definitely again, you get a, a dexterity check with advantage. Oh yeah, dirty twenty. Oh yeah, yeah, cool. So you're you're on all fours. You are so covered in mud at this point, and uh, the only person more covered in mud is Scarf. <laughs> Just like caked. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you, you, you. I just picture. Uh, I just picture Sphere getting his hands up on top of the slope onto the ledge, and kind of slowly pulling himself up. And uh, and yeah. So you're standing behind Amari. You see exactly what she does. About five feet passageway. Again, this is about five feet wide. It's about so five feet long. And then it opens out into a room that uh, is com- uh, looks completely unremarkable from where you're standing. It is mossy walls and muck on the floor and at uh and that's all you see as you look into the room i just so my mace has an industrious worker spell yes would this industrious worker perhaps work to um maybe like dig out some of the mud for me in case there's like stuff buried under the mud or whatever yeah i mean any sort of uh yeah the industrious worker just it just speeds up common tasks just like digging and yeah it would be perfect for just digging out muck if that's what the industrious worker wanted to do i'm going to use one of my charges okay to summon um saffy and uh, have him yes. just uh, clear the muck in case there's something hidden. Okay, um, you, so with uh, Sophia's industrious worker, you don't, uh, <laughs> you don't get to summon something. You have to, you touch a willing creature. Scarf! And for the next eight hours... Please come join us! <laughs> but we should probably throw a rope. I do not need a, a rope, rope down oh, no. for him. If you have... Can I justify when I get up to the the slippery part, jumping the rest of the way and using my athletics? I I don't think so. I I think this is, the way this thing is set up, I think this is a pure dexterity test. Okay, then I'm just going to go forward again. Well, now you have the benefit of experience, and so you can have advantage on your deck save if you're just going for it. Uh, I'm going to do the kind of on all fours maneuver I saw. Okay, I got a 15 and a 17. All right, cool. So you you are able this time uh, to to use some of the handholds that were made by your colleagues, and you do climb up to the top. And you are also standing on the ledge. The ledge at this point above the slope going down is quite crowded, but um, but you are packed in there. Amari is in the front, uh, getting near the room. Uh, Sphere is behind her, and you are now at the top of the of the downward slope. Standing there, Scuff, come, come here. I, I, I go there. Uh, uh, I'm just gonna kind of pat him awkwardly on like the shoulder and be like, "Go find the sexy treasure," <laughs> and then cast Sophia's industrious worker on him. <laughs> right, you. Scarf, you feel uh, just um, an incredible vitality. And, and oh. don't get me wrong, this is not haste. You feel an incredible vitality, but only from a mundane task like digging around in the mud. Um, I'll go ahead and dig around in the mud. <laughs> All right, so you step into, uh, into the next room, and uh, to your displeasure... Uh, the floor drops out, uh, uh, d- drops down about about another foot. And so while the muck appears level, the floor in this room is at mm. least a foot deeper. And you, as you step into this muck, you are down to your waist uh, in This may take some time. Mud. And, um, I know you can do it. <laughs> I believe in you. And you're looking around this room that's about uh, 10 feet by 10 feet. So it's not a big room. It's a perfect square, mossy, muddy walls. You're in this almost swimming pool of mud. And there, um, and yeah, so uh, roll me a perception check real quick as you step down into this 
uh, square uh, mud swimming pool. I'm getting trash compactor from Star Wars vibes. <laughs> yeah. I got dirty 20. Oh, yeah, very cool. So you, um, you look around, and the first thing that you see is another sign, and it is on the wall next to you. So it's facing out. And you have just stepped down in front of your hallway, so uh, so you you can kind of turn around and look. But it is um, it is it is in the corner um, of this room on the wall that the doorway was in that you just stepped out of. So does that make sense? So yeah, so you kind of have to maneuver yourself to to be able to see this thing because the writing is literally kind of on the wall. And so you see that at the same time, you do feel like you see movement in the surface of the muck i guess if i draw my sword it's gonna my it's gonna fill with muck but yeah your your scabbard is going to yeah. totally fill up with with muck. but i yeah. would like to kind of walk with my sword uh in like a thrust downward position over my head okay and uh i will t- i would like to read the sign as well and i'll okay. tell we are not alone <sighs> so you say we're not alone and <laughs> And you move over to the side. Uh, Amari and, and Severe, what are you guys doing while Scarf uh, wades towards this uh, this sign on the wall? And he tells you that you're not alone. Watching them? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, we passed a bunch of bullywugs and frogs. Uh, uh, this guy. <laughs> Captain Obvious, he is. Yes, we have each other. There is a sign here. You look at the sign on the wall, and it is in the same red li- uh, red common that you saw down at the bottom, and it says, Ha ha! Fooled you! Welcome to the majestic city of Roompa! And that is when the mud around you starts to move, and three, uh, just, it, it's like the mud comes alive, and uh, just... <laughs> kind of moves up and you see these winged mud creatures and um one of them just rises up you like your your senses are on hyper alert and you hear one of them scarf just rise directly behind you another one rises up across the room and the third one rises up near the doorway where uh, amari and scarf are looking in and i need you guys to uh, go ahead and roll for initiative. Who would have ever thought that I know I this would. wouldn't what? be a treasure room? <laughs> oh my God. Why would they lie, these simple creatures? It's not very nice. <laughs> these creatures are not sexy whatsoever. No. But I am very angry. Do I look like? Do I kind of look like them? Because I'm just like <laughs> oh, short do. and yeah, covered in mud. Look, you do look very similar to these mud creatures that are rising out of the muck. And at this point, I would like uh, to to point out. I hope it's not lost on you that you were outsmarted by bullywugs at. And just, it's not. Just you it's... failed the basic test <laughs> to enter oh. the bullywug city. <laughs> It was an intelligence test, Scarf. and you failed. It. Yeah, I know. I, uh, I just, I just, you know, it, it's, here's what I'm thinking: is that Amari and Sphere should be smarter than a sign saying "sexy treasure reward." But at oh, the know. same time, I, what if, what if it is a sexy treasure let, reward? Let me stop and pat myself on the back for a moment. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, this is the best trap for these people <laughs> that I could possibly set. We're just humoring them. Because we as, we as players know. Scarf thinks once he beats these guys, he gets his reward. <laughs> there will, there, then clearly <laughs> the treasure will emerge. <laughs> this is all a test. Uh, initiatives. Uh, Scarf, what'd you get? I rolled an 11. 11. All right, cool. Uh, Amari? 16. And then Sphere? Also sixteen. All right, cool. Uh-huh. Uh, what's your uh, what's your dexterity there, uh, Amari and Scarf? And uh, sorry, Amari and Sphere. Z- zero. Yeah, I have a plus four. So okay, cool. So um, so do do do. All right, sweet. 
Um, so the three mud creatures rise up, and the first one is uh, closest to the door, and he looks, and Amari is standing in the doorway, and Sphere is right behind her, and this creature just, first it, it sort of takes this form of almost like this, uh, it's almost like a lizard type creature with these wings uh, that are sort of made of mud, and then it's, it just swells, it's like it like doubles in size in mud, and then all of a sudden it contracts rapidly and just belches viscous mud all over uh, Amari, and I need you to make a dexterity saving throw to see if you get, uh, if you really get coated in this stuff or if you're able to move away. Oh, cocked. Mm, I got a 14. Oh, yes, yeah, so you are able to, uh, to, to move out of the way and the mud soaks the wall and then, uh, you see the mud harden like, um, what was that chocolate stuff that, uh, maybe this is before your time, uh, like the chocolate stuff you used to put on ice cream and oh, then it would the magic shell? Oh yeah, the turtle shell. Yeah, 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 like the magic, uh, shell stuff, yeah. Like a Dairy Queen, they used to dip the cone in it and it, then it would get like tink, tink, tink. Exactly, tink. that's what happens with the mud that this creature vomited. So it, it just like, I'm through and the mud hit, uh, splatters all over the wall as you move away and then you see the mud harden into just like, um, like plaster almost. And, uh, and that is his turn. And Sphere, it is your turn. All right. Um, I'm gonna maneuver past Amari and try and get up on this dude and do a little punch punchy. All right. Punch punch. Punch so punch. You, you do um, slop down into the viscous mud, which is difficult terrain for you, but you're able to largely uh, jump off the ledge uh, and and get where you need to be because he's pretty close. All right. Um, oh, actually, can I try and do something clever? Yeah. Since I'm covered in mud, um, could I try and like I have I'm covered in mud. Could I take the mud that's on my hands? And like try to like fling it in his eyes and like pocket mud. Yeah, as a bonus action, you're good. Well, he's made of mud, so. Uh, but yeah, you can. Uh, oh, he's made of mud. He's oh, made okay. of mud. I, yeah. Oh, I thought I thought it was a bro covered in mud. I didn't realize it was like a muck guy. No, no, no. This this creature, uh, it literally looked like the mud formed up into uh, this elemental creature. Gotcha. We're fighting some mucks here, yeah. is what we're saying. All right. Well, then let me let me just let me just do a uh, unarmed strike on this boy. That right, sounds good. All right. Boosh. Oh yeah, twenty one. Yep, that hits. All right. Go ahead, roll dumb on. Um, five damage, okay. and then let's do. I'm gonna use key point and take uh, patient patient defense. Sounds good. Amari, it's your turn. Okay, so can I see, like, I know the passageway is narrow, but can I see all three of these muddy creatures? Mm-hmm. Yeah, because you're in the doorway looking into the room. So, yeah, you a quick scan, you uh, you do see the one that has risen up behind Scarf. You see one that's sort of across the room, and, and definitely you see the one right in front of you. Right, so I'm going to cast Bane on all three okay. of those buddies. Um, they must make a charisma saving throw. Alright, so we're gonna go uh, around the room. Mud monsters are known for their charisma. <laughs> so oh. they, they have a minus minus two charisma. Alright. The one near you uh, gets a 17. The one next to Scarf uh, fails with a four. And the one across the room f fails with a three. So uh, the only one to save is the one close to you. That is... All I'm going to do. All right. The creature behind a scarf is going to rear back and try to punch scarf in the face. <laughs> um, let's see. So nine plus three, 12 to eight. Uh, to 12 doesn't hit, does it? No. All right. So he uh, slashes at you with his muddy fist <laughs> and you deftly dodge and scarf it's your turn all right then i am going to strike back with my sword uh i have my long sword kind of two-handed and i'm going to kind of try to plunge it down into him uh actually first as a bonus action uh i would like to shift you see like my fur grow even though it's pretty matted down <laughs> and i get a 
All right, so I got eight temporary hit points. All right, very gold. And then I'm going to make my attack. Does an 18 hit? Uh, yeah, definitely. It does. All right. And then since I hit, is that... I've never done this before, so I'm excited. Can I smite him? Yeah, definitely. Okay, so I do 1d10 plus 2d8 plus 3. Yeah, the smite's not messing around. 19 damage. 19 damage. You uh, just absolutely impale this uh, this mud beast. <laughs> And uh, Radiance shoots through your sword, uh, just doing uh, s- massive damage. You can tell suddenly this this elemental is, is, is barely staying together. I will earn this treasure. With that, the um, mud creature across the room drops into the muck and then reforms near the other creature, uh, near the doorway, to try to engage with Amari as well and it's going to pop up right next to the doorway and uh amari slash at you with its with its muddy hand for a 19 to ac is that minus the four already because it's baned oh That's yeah the no, one sorry. from the room right is it is it minus a 1d4 or is it minus four yeah you, so you roll a d4 and subtract that number so it is a with this. So I rolled a two on the bane, and then it's a plus one, so seventeen to AC. Yeah, that still and hits. It's going to be <laughs> five points of damage, and you are covered in mud. You said that did that pop up behind? You said that pop up behind Amari. No, or uh, Amari's still Amari. in the doorway. Correct, Amari. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So it it came up uh, just right in the doorway. So you've kind of got two of these guys. Uh, shoulder to shoulder, pretty gotcha. much in the doorway. Okay. And Severe, you're, um, I, you know, I guess you've moved into the muck and you're engaging the first one, yeah. So the other one has come up at the doorway to, to try to engage with Amari. The one that you are fighting, Severe, is going to try to uh, punch you, and it is. That's a disadvantage because I took dodge. Oh yeah, yeah. It's 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 nowhere close. It, it, it's uh, yeah. He, he flails clumsily at you, and and you easily uh, dodge his his attack. All right, and uh, Severe, it's your turn. I like to think I just stood still, <laughs> and he just swung right over top of me because I'm so short. And then I'm just gonna give him a hoya right into the mud nards. The mud nards. Mud nards. Oh, mud nards. Save. Oh. That's a nat one. <laughs> you put, you try to punch into his mud nards, and uh, the 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 muck just kind of pulls away, kind of like Terminator Two style, you know, as your hand goes through, and uh, and then it closes back in to where it was. And I'll make my second unarmed strike on him. That's better. That's gonna be a twenty-two. That hits. All right. And five damage again. All right, another five damage. Slow and steady wins the race. All right. Yep. You're pounding away on this mud beast. All right, Amari, it's your turn. Okay, so I'm 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 kind of mad that both of these things decided to attack me. So I'm going to cast Word of Radiance on the both of them. Okay. And they need to make a Constitution saving throw. One is minus one d four. Okay. And then, um, you know, I'm just gonna be like. Die and then you know, whatever. Okay. So uh, the first one uh, that is attacking Sphere fails, and the second one uh, also fails. So they both fail their uh, their saving throws. And I got a six. You got a six. I got a six. You got a six. I got a six. Radiant damage, full damage on both of them. Very nice. All right, cool. The the creature that uh, was impaled by Scarf, it looks uh, terribly wounded. It has been largely cleaved in half. It's still somehow holding on to um, onto life. It, it sort of starts to sink back into the mud, Scarf, and then all of a sudden, as it's sinking back into the mud, it seems to be drawing more mud up into itself, and then it surges forward, belching mud, at you out of its mouth, and I need you to make a uh, dexterity saving throw to see if you can avoid being coated. Ooh. 
It's a five. Uh, that does not save. So this thing might. surges forward, barfing uh, mud all over you, which immediately hardens into the plaster mm. that we saw earlier, and you are restrained. And it is uh, it is your turn. You can make another uh, saving throw at the end of your turn uh, from here on out. What is being restrained? Can I attack still? You cannot attack or move. Period. Okay, so I can't really do anything. Um, you can't. You you cannot. You cannot move until you break loose. Would it be a strength saving check to break loose? By the book, it says it is a uh, it is a dexterity saving throw, but to me, it makes a lot more sense that it would be a strength saving throw, and so I'm going to let you use that if you'd like. I'm going to do that. Uh, so strength would be 17. Okay, so you um, you wrestle and wrestle and wrestle, and then crack burst this shell off of you. But that is uh, but that is unfortunately your turn. And with that, we will go back to Amari and her friend, and it is going to, uh, it has Bane, it is going to attack you for a 14 AC. That does not hit. All right. And so you deftly uh, dodge its um, its action. Okay. We're, okay. we're back at the top. Uh, Sphere, your mud buddy is, um, is going to... Uh, is going to attack you uh, with his muddy fist for a um, a natural twenty, and this is the one that did save from Bane, unfortunately. Yeah. So uh, so he's going to hit for a uh, natural twenty. So you will take. Oh, ow, ooh, ow! Ooh. You're going. <laughs> I took. I used patient defense on the wrong turn. Yeah, yeah. You're going to take thirteen points of damage. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, he really just haymakers you with his big muddy fist. Sphere is bloodied. Oh yeah, but still up. But still up. Yeah, you you get totally uh, you get totally hammered by this. You call that a punch? <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> awesome. Uh, it's my turn right after that, isn't it? Uh, uh, yes, it is. Oh, all right. Time to break out this special move. Um, I'm just gonna punch him again. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, he's too delirious. In his head, he's doing great stuff, but he's just swinging. <laughs> Going for the nards. Uh, ooh. 14? Uh, that does hit. Oh, awesome. Cool, 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 cool. Am I close on damage, or can I go ahead and roll my other attack? You are close on damage. All right, let's see what we got. Ooh, uh, eight damage that time. All right, hold on one second. So this is the guy you've been wrestling with, and all right, so he's still, yeah, he is still holding on. All right, well, uh, second on arm strike. Yeah, that's going to be a 24. Okay, that's going to hit. Uh, and seven damage. All right, cool, go ahead. How do you uh, how do you finish off this mud beast? Oh, yeah, just like one of those, I'm like speed bagging on his nards, his mud nards, <laughs> and then it's like, through, through, through. And I just do the big punch, and it just, like, puts a hole, a big hole, like, where his entire pelvis would be. And I just, like, wave to Scarf, like, how you doing over there, bud? And then, <laughs> and then he just collapses in a big puddle, very, like, X-Men style, when that dude turned into water. He's like, oh, water. A Capri Sun commercial. <laughs> very yeah. nice. Awesome. That's uh, that's it for uh, that's it for one of our muddy friends, Amari. It's your turn. All right. So I'm going to look at the one in front of me, and I'm going to cast Toll of the Dead. And for sound effects, Nate, can you please roll your d20? <laughs> <Gone. Okay. laughs> and since he's been damaged a bit. I'm going to use a d12, but he needs to succeed on a wisdom saving throw. All right. Mud creatures on a wisdom saving throw. All right. Straight up, uh, eight. Oh. Gonzo. Uh, so that would be 11 necrotic. Mm. Ooh, ouch. Praise be a new The mud uh, crackles and pops, and you see pain go across the face of this uh, mud creature. All right, and he's looking uh, hes looking pretty beat up. Uh, the 
mud creature who just soaks scarf in mud is going to attack, uh, flail wildly as scarf breaks out of his mud Ugh. cocoon and uh, and 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 fail to do any sort of damage at all. Scarf, it's your turn. Uh, I will make another attack with my sword. Just another, like downward. Ugh. Okay. Uh, roll for it. Ooh, a twenty-three. All right, that definitely hits. All right, so one d ten plus three. 11 damage. Oh, yeah. So ha- tell me about the end of this uh, of this mud creature. I want to, like, have it as, it, as I pierce down, just kind of, like, go right through its mud mouth and then just kind of bring my sword back, like, cutting it open from the inside as it just, like, melts back into the pool. That's awesome. So that's it. Uh, Amari, your creature is going to attack again. He has Bane. So 17 to AC. Yeah, that hits. Okay, you're going to take uh, two points of damage, and it is Sphere's turn. Uh, this other guy's right in front of me, right? Because he's the one attacking Amari. Yeah. Yeah, I'll just go unarmed strike on that boy, bad boy. That's boring, but okay. I don't really know what else there is to do at the moment. Uh, 15 to hit. Oh, that does hit. All right. Six damage. All right. And bonus action unarmed strike. Yep. Uh, oh. It's 11. That does hit. Oh, jeez. Okay. Yeah, I guess they're mud. Uh, eight damage. All right. Uh, so tell me about the end of uh, this mud monster. This one's going to be a little more fun. So since I killed him, I'll do... Why don't you fight somebody your own size? Get down on the mud, sweep out his legs, and then he like kinda, like shrinks down to my high size, and then I punch his head off. Cover Kai. <laughs> punch him. <laughs> Very nice. All right, cool. So that's uh, the the room fades to silence now, and there's no more motion. Uh, you're looking around a uh, a fairly small room, as I said. It's uh, it's waist deep muck for uh, for most of you. For sphere, it's almost uh, it's almost like armpit level. And the sign that says "Ha ha, fooled you." Welcome to the majestic city of Roompa. I would like to take that. Is that sign like? Portable. I mean, it is uh, attached to the wall. Um, yes, but the walls are soggy. Can I just take it? Yeah, yeah, you could. Yeah, it wouldn't. It would not be hard to get the um, to get the sign off the wall. Um, while they're doing that, can I just kind of walk up to Severe and Amari and put my hands on both of their shoulders and uh, lay on hands? Say, <laughs> you seem tired after our battle, and I will give two HP to Amari. And eight HP to scarf. Or sorry, severe. <laughs> you talking to me or yourself? <laughs> yeah. So I'm gonna take that sign and I'm gonna I'm gonna be nice and just be like, I, I, I mean I could just let scarf continue to um, excavate this room, but we all know that it was a ruse, and Amari does feel a little bit um, wounded that she fell for this, so. She won't continue to um, humiliate Scarf to her own entertainment by making him dig out endless amounts of mud. Um, so she will, I guess, since that... I don't know if she can dispel that spell on him or if it just mm-hmm. needs to run it. Okay, so she'll just dispel it yeah. from him okay. and um, say, uh, well, let's let's get out of here. I imagine it'll be much easier to go down than up. Scarf's still going first. N- no, I, I I would like to. So she's going to okay. kind of like hop over and she like puts her shield down and she kind of sits her butt in it and she just like... <laughs> shield surfing. Yeah, she just kind of slides off. <laughs> like, like, like in some sort of a Mary Poppins warrior maneuver, she slides down on her shield, landing gracefully at the bottom. And even more unsettling <laughs> Mary Poppins. <laughs> exactly Weird. Right. A death cleric Weird. Mary Poppins. <laughs> yeah. All right. Hey, Scarf, sit down, would you? <laughs> uh, I, I sit. All right. And then I'm going to, like, get in his lap. <laughs> and then I, like, take his arms and I put them over my shoulders like those. Uh, <laughs> like, hey, put your hands in your pockets. Please keep your hands <laughs> and your feet inside the scarf at all times. <laughs> all right. Here we go. I start doing the scoop thing. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you you gotta hop forward and, and then and then uh, down the down you go and, uh, and and you're able to land uh, nicely against the the opposite wall since everyone is positioned correctly and ready. All right, 
You make your way back down to the uh, the nasty, slippery uh, slope, all the way back to the intersection. You guys are uh, are looking at the signpost again, and uh, the frog chorus has gotten quieter off to the east. And uh, you've got the great, great, wonderful hall in that direction. You've got the majestic city is in the northeast, and you've got the stunning forest to the south. All right, frog fuckers, because I know you can hear me. We had defeated your challenge. And you owe us sexy treasure. (laughs) So just be aware that Scarf is coming for you. And you owe us. There's a debt to be paid. (laughs) A very sexy debt. It better be very erotic. (laughs) I want these coins to have nipples. Gold also works. Gold is good. (laughs) Amari's going to kind of like take out her shield. She's going to recast light on it because it's been a while. And um, she's just going to start like tapping the side of it with her mace going, Table rock. Table rock. Oh, yeah. Table Table rock. rock. (laughs) And then just start going towards the great, great hall. And I follow. All right. (laughs) Yeah. As as you walk towards the great, great hall, yelling, Table rock, you actually hear people go, (gasps) and then scamper away. This uh, actually seems to be an extremely effective strategy, and you do hear numerous bullywugs hear the word table rock and scatter. You follow the passageway towards the great, great, wonderful hall. And uh, in time, you make your way to what must be the entrance to the great, great, wonderful hall. Because you come into a cavern that is the size of a football stadium. This thing is absolutely enormous. It is as big as one of the big concert amphitheaters like Blockbuster Pavilion, you know, uh, Wolf Lodge Pavilions, things like that. The ones that have, you know, big, uh, big concerts like the Rolling Stones come or bands that are more recent and cool that I am not aware of. As you look down from your height, you're almost at the back of this amphitheater, or you are at the back of this amphitheater, and you're looking down at the slope down below you and then this large bowl, and there are hundreds of bullywugs and grungs, which are smaller, uh, smaller, more brightly covered frog folk, and there are giant toads, and some of the giant toads, uh, the bullywugs or the grungs are just sitting on top of, like they've used them as some sort of a mount. And the, the bullywugs and the grungs and the giant toads are just sunk down into the mud. It is just like a warm incubator in here. It is the perfect tropical frog type habitat. And it's not hard to figure out why these guys would try to build some sort of a bullywug establishment here. The chorus of chirps and barks and ribbits and brumps is just deafening as the uh, bullywugs are all obviously talking excitedly to each other. The gi- You see the giant toads, as I said, people are sort of sitting on them. You also see them on leashes. They have like harnesses, like you see dogs wearing. And uh, some of the frog folk cluster together. Others hold torches and weapons. And, and you get the idea that they're there in sort of like this spirit of defiance. They have, um, you know, so like shovels and, and uh, just... Uh, just basic crappy bullywug weapons. And um, there's a rickety stage that uh, clearly slopes from one corner to the other. And uh, just just the same type of craftsmanship you've seen everywhere in the bullywug city. Just uh, soggy, uh, poorly constructed wood uh, feature. But all of the bullywugs seem to be looking towards this stage and as you're looking at this you hear and the frog chorus dies down and you see um, the fattest bullywug that you can imagine making his way onto the stage. He looks like 
a mixture of a bullywug and a giant toad come together. And um, he makes his way on to the uh, stage and he is holding a giant horn that is made from this enormous snail shell. And you realize that that is the sound that you have been hearing echoing through the chambers. And as he steps up, one of the grungs, uh, one of the smaller frogs, this neon yellow frog, steps forward and in a high voice, so this sort of this kind of piercing uh, voice says, The Honorable Matthias Flyton. And you hear everyone go, burp, 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 beep, 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 burp, burp, burp. And this bullywug steps up and says, Order! Order! As many of you know, Table Rock has returned. And, and with this, the whole place just goes bonkers. And it's like screams of frog chirps, and you see the uh, the, the torches start pumping up and down. <laughs> We have a plan, and our leader will protect us. Please welcome our leader, the leader of the majestic city of Roomba, Governor And at this point, a, um, a tall and skinny bullywug that looks like a regular bullywug was stretched to twice its height and half of its width uh, walks out. And he is wearing what, um, what Amari recognizes as a bathrobe. <laughs> and um, he is holding a... Um, a, a, what at one time it looks like a mace that he has taken the top off of so that it resembles a royal scepter. And he walks out onto the stage and says, As you know, Teddy Little Rock is our greatest fear, and it has returned. I don't mean to scare you, but perhaps children should leave the great, great, wonderful hall if you have brought them along. And at that point, you see uh, some of the bullywugs with tiny little frogs clinging to their back <laughs> start to file out of the side doors, <laughs> heading away towards uh, what... um to what you think must be uh, the majestic city of Roompa, based on how the, uh, the the passageways led out of that intersection. So they are heading in that direction. Now, it is true that we have already felt Taylor Rock's invasible desire today. I told you this day might come, and I have prepared for it. We will triumph this time. And you hear, uh, especially all the bullywugs that are armed, go, yeah! <laughs> and uh, they're pumping their arms and their weapons and their torches into the air. And uh, Governor Phineas Millionaire, or Phoebus Millionaire says, let me introduce our contingency plan. I have gathered together the greatest team of frog folk, hunters, and warriors that is known in these lands. I present to you our own brutal occurrence response party. We call it 
And everyone starts to go burp, 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 burp. And as they're getting more fired up, you see, you see four frog poke, uh, frog folk approaching the stage, and they're like professional wrestlers coming to the ring. And uh, this place is absolutely going wild. And Governor uh, Phoebus Millionaire says, You have met them in our city. You know what they're here for. My rivals said that this was a waste. But here we are. They are the finest warriors. That have ever existed. Put your frog hands together for Bulldog Warpinger. And this uh, bullywug that looks like a beach ball with tiny legs and Tyrannosaurus arms wearing chain mail. And he's got this enormous mouth that looks like he could eat watermelons like they were almonds. Steps up onto the stage. And you people go, grog, grog, grog. And the second one uh, that is uh, the second warrior moves to step onto the stage and you see a neon red grung with black splotches that look like a Rorschach test and he has a crossbow that is twice as long as he is tall and there's an enormous um, looking glass mounted on top of this huge crossbow and uh, Governor Phoebus Millionaire says, <laughs> the silence. And places, yeah! And they go, and a Phoebus Millionaire goes, and Lord Mouth. And there is this, um, what looks like a normal bully wug, except that he has a tricorn hat, uh, like a swashbuckler hat, and a rapier tucked through his uh, belt, steps onto the stage, and he, he does the sort of the shaking hand up into the air and then into a sweeping bow where he whips his feathered tricorn hat off and just tucks into a deep bow. And uh, the, the crowd goes, mouth, 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 mouth. And the last, but certainly not least, High Priest Grognoggin! And um, this green, just leggy tree frog is what he looks like with a white toga wrapped around him and he has a four-pronged spear that looks like a frog gigger. And he joins the other three frog warriors on stage and f and the crowd at this point is going nuts until the honorable matthias fly tongue blows his horn again and a silence falls over this enormous gathering phoebus millionaire steps back forward and says we will be releasing Burp to find Table Rock and destroy the monster. Burp, 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 burp. Phoebus Millionaire pushes his palms downward to calm the cloud, and he says, I recommend staying together in large groups until the beast is destroyed. With that, let us begin the hunt! Burp, 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 burp. Peeper 
Lord of the Silent is uh, thrusting his giant crossbow with the looking glass on top into the air. And uh, Bull Grog, the pincher, he's just with his tiny little Tyrannosaurus arms. He's just doing thumbs up to the crowd and then finger guns like that. And Lord Mouth is uh, doing like the princess uh, 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 Queen Elizabeth wave where he's just kind of rotating his hand as he walks away. And the high priest Grognoggin is, is mock praying. You know, he's, he's making, uh, he's got his palms together and he's touching his forehead in like a namaste way. And then he's uh, looking up at the, uh, at the ceiling and shaking his hands like a, like a minister at a, at a out of control revival. And they leave the stage and head through a side passage, disappearing towards the majestic city of Wumpa. And um, and you start to sense that this shindig may be breaking up, and you get a feeling that you are a bit exposed standing in the hallway that you are in. And that's going to be it for today's session. Hey, everyone. Dustin Bays. Uh, welcome back to the Blue Ridge Adventures Guild. We're so excited to be back from our holiday break and to be pumping out new episodes for you guys. Uh, if you're like me, you made an awesome New Year's resolution to rate and review more podcasts. So stick with it and rate and review our podcast. It's super helpful. Uh, if you want to find us on them internets, you can find us on Twitter and Instagram by searching BragPod. It's B-R-A-G-P-O-D. And you can also find us on Facebook and YouTube by looking up Blue Ridge Adventures Guild. Next episode is going to be coming out in January 25th, and that's when we're going to see you again. See you then. Thanks. Bye.